Now let's view the major components of the 540 air system. The air system consists of a group of components that control the brakes and the various accessories that run on compressed air. Airflow originates at the air compressor. It's located on the right side of the engine and is belt driven off the engine crankshaft pulley. The compressor runs continuously while the engine is running, but the actual compression of air is controlled by the air governor. The air governor is bracket mounted to the right rear frame under the compressor. The governor, acting in conjunction with the unloading mechanism and the compressor cylinder block, stops the compression of air by unloading when the pressure in the system reaches 105 to 125 PSI and starts the compressor when pressure in the air system reaches the desired minimum of 95 to 105 PSI. Three air reservoirs located in the front frame store the pressurized air from the compressor. The tanks are mounted above the front axle. The main, or wet reservoir, receives all the air from the compressor. This reservoir has a safety valve which limits the air pressure in the tank at 150 PSI. From the wet reservoir, compressed air enters the dual chamber reservoir located directly above the wet reservoir. The right chamber supplies air for the rear brakes and the left chamber supplies air for the front brakes. Located in the lines which connect all the reservoirs are one-way check valves. The check valves prevent air loss from one reservoir to another should a line or reservoir rupture. Each reservoir has an external drain line located on the right side of the loader. The drain lines are used to remove any moisture which collects in the reservoirs. The 540 air system can be equipped with an optional alcohol injector. The unit is located in the air line between the compressor and the wet reservoir and is mounted in the right side of the engine compartment next to the fuel filters. Its function is to inject alcohol vapor into the air system to prevent condensation from accumulating and freezing in the brake system. Warm air from the compressor passes through the injector and evaporates small amounts of alcohol. This air-alcohol mixture is then piped into the air system. Uh, it's important to keep the injector tank filled with methyl alcohol. The 540 is equipped with two air-actuated brake treadle valves located under the floor of the operator's compartment. The brake treadle valves are foot-operated air metering devices used to direct a measured amount of compressed air from the dual chamber reservoir to the air chamber of the power clusters. The right treadle valve, when actuated, applies only the front and rear service brakes. The left treadle valve not only applies the service brakes, but also disengages the transmission. This arrangement provides the operator with a choice of stopping the machine either with or without the transmission engaged. Air from the treadle valves is directed to the two power clusters. The power clusters are mounted to an inside front frame member. The photo shows one power cluster viewed from under the loader. The power cluster is simply an air actuated brake master cylinder. Air from the actuated treadle valve is directed against a large piston and rod assembly in the circular portion of the unit. The rod in turn pushes on the small hydraulic piston inside the master cylinder portion of the unit. The hydraulic piston pressurizes the brake fluid, which causes the pistons in the caliper brake assembly to apply the brakes. A fluid reservoir for the master cylinder portion of the two power clusters is remotely mounted. The reservoir is located just inside a hinged access cover opening on the left side of the front frame. The reservoir acts as a storage and expansion chamber for the brake fluid. A sight gauge is attached to the plug located on the side of the reservoir. The 540 employs air over hydraulic dry caliper disc brakes, which are located at the outboard ends of each axle. The brake disc is bolted to the wheel hub and the brake caliper assembly is bolted to the axle housing. When the service brakes are applied, four pistons in the caliper assembly compress the rotating brake disc between two pads and stop the loader. The machine is equipped with a spring-actuated air pressure-released expanding shoe-type parking brake. 
The parking brake is mounted to the rear side of the transfer drive assembly. A spring-loaded, air-released cylinder actuates the parking brake. A brake control valve mounted on the instrument panel permits the flow of air to or releases air from the cylinder. With air pressure exhausted from the cylinder, the spring within the cylinder is allowed to expand, retracting the actuator within the cylinder and applying the brake. Reservoir air pressure releases the parking brake. Therefore, if air pressure in the reservoir is low, the brake will not release, even though the control knob is in the release position. Let's stop here and review the air system. Stop the tape while you're answering the questions. The answer to number one is B. The service brakes are the dry caliber disc type. Number two is B. The transfer drive provides the mount for the parking brake. Number three is A. The air compressor is belt driven. Number four is true. A remote drain line for all three reservoirs is located on the right side of the front frame. Number five is true. The parking brake uses a spring to apply the brake and requires air to compress the spring, releasing the brake. Now we'll take a look at the major components of the hydraulic system. The 540 hydraulic system provides the operator with responsive steering at low RPM and full loader hydraulics at high engine speed. The hydraulic system is divided into two circuits, steering and loader. Each circuit has its own pump but shares the same reservoir. The reservoir for the steering and loader circuit is integral with the bulkhead assembly. A vacuum pressure relief valve mounted on top of the reservoir next to the lockable filler cap limits the maximum pressure in the reservoir at 30 psi. A sight gauge located on the front side of the reservoir allows the operator to easily check the fluid level without having to open the filler cap. The hydraulic system has a refill capacity of approximately 34 gallons. The tandem mounted steering and switch pumps are gear type pumps mounted on and driven by the torque converter. Also included in this arrangement is an internally mounted diverter valve located between the two pump elements. The steering element supplies the steering system with oil at 42 GPM at 2500 RPM. The switch element provides a flow of oil to the hydraulic system. The flow from this pump element is switched between the steering and loader circuits by the diverter valve. When the RPMs are low, all flow from the switch pump element is directed to the steering circuit. This provides for very good steering at low RPMs. When the RPMs are higher, the steering pump element is sufficient to handle any steering valve request and the entire switch pump element flow is directed to the loader valve. The switch pump element is rated at 38 GPM at 2500 RPM. From the steering pump and switch pump, hydraulic fluid is sent to the steering control valve. This valve is located inside the right side of the rear frame. It's mechanically actuated by the steering wheel through a steering gear assembly and drag linkage. Whenever the steering wheel is turned in either direction, the directional spool in the steering valve is moved sending hydraulic fluid to the steering cylinders. Excess oil is routed back to the reservoir, some via the oil cooler located in the bottom tank of the radiator. Whenever an outside mechanical force tends to articulate the machine, the service port relief valves in the steering valve will open and prevent mechanical damage to the system components. Two powerful hydraulic steering cylinders with a bore and stroke of four by 17 inches provide the force necessary to steer the 540. The right cylinder is shown in the photo. The head end of each cylinder is pin mounted inside the front frame and the rod end is pin mounted to the rear frame. When the steering wheel is turned, hydraulic fluid is directed by the steering control valve to the rod side of one cylinder and the head side of the other cylinder. This causes one cylinder to extend and the other to retract turning the machine. 
If desired, the 540 can be equipped with an optional ground-driven steering pump. The pump, which is mounted on the transmission, is driven through the drivetrain by the machine's wheels. And when the 540 is moving, this pump is operating. During normal operating conditions, fluid supplied by the ground-driven pump circulates in a closed circuit through the pump's diverter valve and back to the reservoir. Also during normal operation, fluid from the standard steering system positions the diverter valve spool in a closed position. Should the engine or hydraulic steering pump malfunction, the diverter valve will shift and automatically route the ground-driven steering pump flow to the steering cylinders via the steering valve, thus allowing the operator to safely steer the machine until it can be stopped. The loader pump is also a gear-type pump, which is mounted on and driven by the torque converter. It supplies oil to the loader valve at the rate of 44 GPM at 2,500 RPM. Shown here is the loader valve. It's a two-spool valve, which is located under the right side of the operator's compartment in the front frame. One spool controls the bucket operation, and one controls the boom operation. The spools are controlled by the boom and bucket levers in the operator's compartment. The boom spool has four positions, raise, neutral, lower, and float. It's detented in the raise and float positions. The bucket spool is a three-position spool, dump, neutral, and rollback. This spool is detented in the rollback position. Two large hydraulic cylinders with a bore and stroke of 6 by 38 inches provide the force to raise and lower the boom. The head end of each cylinder is mounted on pins welded to the lower rear corner of the front frame. The rod ends are pin-mounted to the boom arms. The 540 is equipped with an adjustable automatic boom kickout control. It's located on the left boom arm at the pivot point. Now this control is an air-operated valve which will, when the boom arms reach a predetermined position, stop the boom from raising. The boom kickout consists of an adjustable cam attached to the boom arm. As the boom arm raises, the cam will strike a roller on the air valve. The air valve allows air to flow to the boom spool detent housing where the air pushes on a piston. The piston then pushes the boom spool out of the detented raised position and back into the hold position. The bucket cylinder has a bore and stroke of 7 by 22 inches. Its function is to roll back and dump the bucket. An adjustable automatic bucket leveler is standard on the 540. The object of the bucket leveler is to cause the bucket to return to its proper digging position automatically after its load has been dumped and the loader is returning to the work area. The bucket leveler consists of a steel bar connected to the rod eye and an air valve located under a protective cover on the bucket cylinder. As the bucket cylinder extends to roll back the bucket, the bar, at a predetermined location, actuates the air valve. The air valve allows air to flow to the bucket spool detent housing where the air pushes on a piston. The piston then pushes the bucket spool out of the rollback position and into the hold position. Let's break here for another brief review. Stop the tape while you're answering the question. The answer to number one is true. The 540 ground-driven steering pump is always operating, just recirculating the hydraulic fluid whenever the machine is moving. Number two is torque converter. The torque converter housing provides the mount for the pumps, and the converter rotating housing drives the pumps. Number three is false. A sight gauge is used to check the level of fluid in the hydraulic reservoir. Number four is C. The oil cooler for the hydraulic system is located in the bottom tank of the radiator. Number five is false. The switch pump flow is directed to the loader valve at high engine speeds, not the steering pump flow. In the last section of this program, 
you will be familiarized with the controls, instruments, and gauges located in the operator's compartment. The 540 operator's compartment is located on the front frame with the entry on the left side. Mounting the cab to the front frame allows the operator to turn with the bucket and gives him a clear, unobstructed view through the windshield. Now, this is a real safety feature when working in tight quarters and helps the operator work faster to take advantage of the high production potential of this loader. The 540 comes standard with a fully certified rollover protective structure. The ROPS cab shown in the photo is also available, complete with tinted safety glass and windshield wipers with an electric washer. Of course, air conditioning, heating and defrosting and additional sound suppression material are also available. Once inside the operator's compartment, the 540 operator will find the gauges and controls logically arranged and within easy reach from the seat for comfortable, efficient operation. The seat itself is fully padded and can be adjusted to various positions to suit any operator. Mounted on the left side of the dash area are the transmission controls. First in line is the transmission gear selector lever. This lever is used to select first, second, or third gear of the transmission. To the right of this lever is the transmission direction lever. It has three positions, forward, neutral, and reverse. A hinged transmission direction lever lock is provided as a safety feature. Whenever the 540 is left unattended, move the lock over the control lever. Next to these controls, we can see the parking brake knob, which is to be used only when parking the machine. Pull the knob out to apply the brake and push it in to release it. The brake will not release unless there is ample air pressure in the system. Whenever the parking brake is applied, the beeper under the control knob will sound. The instrument panel is located directly in front of the operator's seat. We'll describe the lights, gauges, and controls which are mounted on the panel shown in the picture. Other optional instruments may be ordered to suit your particular needs. In this view, we will focus on the cluster of warning lights and gauges at the extreme left of the instrument panel. Moving from left to right, in the top row, we find the low engine oil pressure light the combination parking brake applied and water temperature lights, the engine coolant temperature gauge, and the fuel level gauge. In the bottom row are the ground-driven steering light, the combination brake warning and torque converter temperature lights, the converter temperature gauge, and the voltmeter. On the right side of the instrument panel are 11 gauges and controls. In the top row, starting at the left, we can see the hour meter, the air pressure gauge, the oil pressure gauge, and at the extreme right, the tachometer. In the bottom row, starting again at the left, we find three warning lights, low water, low air pressure, and the hydraulic filter warning light. Next is the four-position light switch, followed by the four-position key-operated ignition switch. Directly beneath the tachometer are the ether start button and the heater control knob. The engine shutdown handle is located under the instrument panel to the right of the steering column. It controls the fuel supply to the engine. When the handle is pulled out, fuel to the engine is shut off and the engine stops. Also visible in this photo is the optional turn signal hazard attachment. Move the handle up to indicate a right turn, down for a left turn, and pull it out for hazard light. Now, let's take a look at the loader controls which are mounted to the operator's right. The bucket control lever has three positions, dump, neutral, and rollback. To dump the bucket, push the lever forward. When the lever is released, it will automatically return to neutral. In neutral, the bucket will remain in the position it is already in. To roll back the bucket, pull the control lever back. The boom control lever has four positions, raise, neutral, lower, and float. Push the lever all the way forward for float. This position is detented so that the lever must be pulled back manually to the neutral position. Float position allows the bucket to follow the contour of the ground surface. To lower the boom, push the lever to the lower position. The lever will automatically return to neutral when released. In neutral, 
the boom will remain stationary in the position that it is already in. To raise the boom, pull the lever back as far as it will go. A detent in the valve will lock the lever in this position. The return to neutral can be done manually or will be done automatically when the boom reaches the preset stopping height of the automatic boom kickout. Now it's important to remember that the boom assembly, if in the raised position, can be lowered any time the lever is moved to float or lower, whether the engine is running or not. Always lower the boom to the ground when it is not in use. Although not visible in this picture, the 540 loader control levers are equipped with a hinged lever lock at the base of the levers. Whenever the machine is left unattended, or the machine is traveling long distances without any loader functions needed, move the lock over the tongs on the bottom of the control levers. Located below the instrument panel on the floor are the operator's foot controls. Both pedals on the left apply the brakes, but the extreme left one also stops clutch pressure in the transmission. When the brake transmission disconnect pedal is depressed, no power can be transmitted through the transmission. So full engine power can be used to operate the loader hydraulics while braking. The right brake pedal should be depressed to stop the machine. Depress this pedal according to the machine's speed and road conditions. Then slowly release the pedal as the 540 comes to a stop. Never pump the brakes by repeatedly depressing and releasing the brake pedal, as this can reduce the air pressure too low for braking. The accelerator is depressed to increase engine speed and released to decrease engine speed. The air horn button is located between the brake and accelerator pedals. Press the button to sound the horn. The horn will sound until the button is released. The black button at the lower left of this photo controls the windshield washer. Depress the button to wash the windows, release it to stop. Now that you've taken a good look at the 540, we're sure you'll agree it's a welcome addition to our growing family of 500 series articulated wheel loaders. This completes the orientation program on the International 540 Wheel Loader. Separate in-depth programs covering the major systems of the 540 are also available to satisfy your training requirements.